Hello all. In this video, you join me from a rather unique location in central London, as I'm at Marlebone Station today to ride one of Chilton Railway's Class 168s. However, there is a slight twist to this ride, as the Class 168 we'll be riding is the UK's first diesel and battery hybrid train. However, how does it hold up in passenger service? Is it any good? Is it any better than the diesel 168s? Let's go and find out. Marlebone Station itself is one of London's most unique London termini, notable for several reasons. One, in that it is managed by Chiltern Railways themselves, rather than Network Rail. And two, it is the only London termini to have diesel-only trains. However, this is clearly about to change. The station itself is also notable for its amazing historic design, as well as reminiscence of the Network Southeast days, as can be seen from the flashes located on the walls, providing a rather unique sense of being back in the 1980s and 90s. Our service today is the 1811 departure to Aylesbury and we'll be going via Amersham rather than the usual Chiltern mainline. However, I'm only going as far as Amersham as I do believe that will be enough for me to fully experience the ride of quality of this train. Heading towards our service at Platform 5, we come across one of Chiltern Railway's silver sets, which consists of a Class 68 diesel locomotive, as well as six Mark III carriages and a DBT, commonly used on services to Oxford and Birmingham. I will be having a look at these relatively soon, so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the video. I seem to have got my timing right, as my service to Amersham has just arrived after completing its journey from Oxford. My train today consists of four carriages, with the rear two carriages being an unmodified Class 168, as used on Chiltern Railway's ma mainline services. Although, as can be seen here, they are often found on non-mainline services, such as the Aylesbury via Amersham route. However, we are not concerned with this particular Class 168 today, as the main set that we're interested in is the front set here, which is Chiltern Railway's specially modified hybrid flex train, which includes both diesel and battery power. The project itself includes the prototype, which is 168329, a former Transpennine Express machine, which transferred in 2015-16. Now that we're towards the front of the train, I feel like I can talk more about the Class 168, as well as the Hybrid Flex project in general. The Class 168s were built in several batches between 1998 and 2004, with the whole fleet being operated by Chiltern Railways. The development of the Class 168 led to the successful development of the remaining members of the Bombardier Turbostar family, notably the Class 170, Class 171s and Class 172s. The Hybrid Flex project is a scheme devised by Porterbrook to convert one of the 28 strong fleet of Class 168 units 168329, which is also one of the nine former TPE Class 170s transferred to Chiltern, into a diesel and battery hybrid train, which, according to Porterbrook, will consume up to 24% less fuel, use 41% less friction braking energy, and emit up to 122 tonnes a year less CO2 and 74% less nitrogen oxides. The unit was converted during 2020 and was officially tested on the Ecclesbourne Valley Railway between late 2020 and early 2021. The Hybrid Flex was officially launched in July 2021 as part of Chiltern Railway's Silver Anniversary, celebrating 25 years of the company's operations, despite having changed ownership several times during the lifetime of the franchise. Shortly after the launch, however, the unit returned to Wolverton for further modifications, as can be seen here and was not officially launched into passenger service until late February 2022. A second unit, 168321, was also due to be converted as part of the Hybrid Flex project. However, this was subsequently shelved, owing to increased costs as well as operational issues, and as such, it returned from Wolverton a couple of weeks ago, unmodified. Well, now that we know a little bit more about our unit, it's time for us to board and take a look around. Starting from the front of the train, we can see that the general consist is 2 plus 2 throughout, featuring tables, which is useful for long distance journeys, such as London to Birmingham and Oxford. Approaching the wheelchair accessible area, we can see that there's a PRM specified toilet, which I'll check out later. 
It was disappointing that to get into the other carriage of the train, you did have to use a bit of force. At the rear of the train is a standard toilet, and apart from that, that's more or less it. It is pretty basic for a two carriage train, so I think it will do the job nicely. So with that being said, it's time to take my seat and hit the iron road, so let's go. Calling at Harrow on the Hill, Rickmansworth, Chorley Wood, Chalfont and Latimer, Amersham, Great Missenden, Wendover, Stoke Mandeville, and Aylesbury. If you see something that doesn't look right, speak to staff or text British Transport Police on 61016. We'll sort it. See it, say it, sort it. As can be seen and definitely heard, the Class 168 Hybrid Flex is definitely very silent and if I'm going to be honest this makes it such a much better journey compared to the standard Class 168. It definitely makes it a lot more relaxing and a lot more peaceful. I'm sat in the quiet zone at the moment and if I'm going to be honest this definitely does make it seem more that way considering the reduced noise and levels that you can hear on this train. Not to mention that undertaking this journey at sunset over the Chiltern main line makes for a very picturesque and relaxing journey. So, let's go onwards. It should also be noted that the maximum speed on this route is 75 miles an hour. However, we're currently at 58, and even then, the train is still incredibly quiet, which is really impressive, and it does really make for a much better journey experience. What we are now passing is Wembley Park Tube Station which is where we now split from the main Chilton main line onto the London to Amersham via Aylesbury route. On this section, it is rather unique as we now share track with the London Underground Metropolitan line all the way to Amersham. Sadly, the famous Wembley Stadium could not be seen as it was on the other side to me and there was someone sitting in the seat. After an approximately 14 minute journey from Marlebone, we are now approaching Harrow on the Hill, which is the main station in the town of Harrow in North West London, and is a major hub for Metropolitan Line services to all destinations. As we depart Harrow on the Hill for our next stop of Rickmansworth, I thought it'd be worth actually checking out the train's features for now, considering how 
that is now starting to get a bit darker. So, without further ado, it's time for a Know Your Seat. At face value, the seats can be seen as quite hard and uncomfortable. However, this is indeed not the case, with these being some of the most comfortable for a regional BMU. Another good feature that the seats have is that they have armrests in both the end and the middle, which is quite great if you ask me. Probably something I've yet to see on another UK train is a retractable and extendable table, which is quite innovative and a very good feature in my opinion, as is standard with all 168s. Plug sockets are also present throughout the train, which is great for charging your portable device. However, I would have liked to see some USB sockets as well, but that's just my opinion. There are also labels stating that there are charging points, as well as Wi-Fi. However, I decided not to connect to the Wi-Fi, so I didn't really need it. Coat hangers are also present next to each seat, and are in a rather good position to be fair, as you can easily watch your stuff whilst also not having it in the way. Overhead luggage racks are also present throughout the train, which is great to see, as you can store small items as well as bags just above you, which enables you to monitor them. Throughout the train, there are also slogans and labels detailing the Hybrid Flex project. Feel free to pause if you want to read them. I thought I'd use this opportunity to check out the toilet before the service gets is expected to get any busier. So, clo door closing. There is a bit of a lag, as you can see. Right, I guess we can begin. Oh wait, I forgot to show you how to lock the toilet. There's usually a dial next to the button, which is pretty useful. Right, let's begin. So, I do like the design of the toilet. It does seem pretty cool. Plus, it is pretty clean in here. The soap and the tap seem to be working well. Although, I have to admit, I don't like the fact that the tap is only spraying out pumps of water every now and then, rather than it being a consistent flow. The dryer seems to be working okay. And with that... I guess it's okay, but yeah, I'll give it a thumbs up. Right, that brings us nicely into our next stop of Rickmansworth. As we approach Rickmansworth, I thought I'd make note of the fact that we are now on dual track, sharing it solely with the Metropolitan Line. As the London Underground signalling is unique to the rest of the National Rail System, the Class 165 and 168 units are fitted with Tripcock equipment in order to accommodate for this which is the only fleet in the UK to be to do so, not including the London Overground Class 378s. And upon arrival into Chalfont and Latimer, the penultimate stop before Amersham, that brings my time with Chiltern Railways to a close. Overall, what do I think of their Class 168 Hybrid Flex train? Overall, I have to admit that I was surprised I was pleasantly surprised by the Class 168 Hybrid Flex train both in terms of ride quality as well as general ambience, as I have to admit that it was a really pleasant journey as to what would normally be quite an unbearable journey on board a diesel train, least to mention not because of the noise, but also because of the ride quality. But this has definitely improved the Class 168s by a lot, despite the fact that they are already good trains and the ride quality is pretty good. Considering the fact that these units are over 20 years old, and the ride quality is already pretty impressive, it's no surprise that Portabrook are putting in plans and projects to extend their life cycle beyond what is expected to be the complete removal of diesel trains within the next decade or so. However, I would honestly say that this should, in my opinion, Chiltern Railways should treat this as a stopgap, as electrification would be a much better so long-term solution from my point of view. But that's just my opinion. What did you think of the Hybrid Flex Class 168? Please do let me know your thoughts in the comments below. But until then, welcome to Amersham. Station to which Oyster cards are valid on this service.
And there we have it, the UK's first diesel battery hybrid train. A very unique and innovative solution, especially at a time where we need to be very proactive in tackling climate change. Well, I do hope you've enjoyed the video today. If you did, please help us out by giving it a like, sharing the video, as well as subscribing to the channel and enabling notifications, as I'm now uploading new videos every two Fridays at 5pm. Well, that's it from me guys, it's time for me to head home. So, in the meantime, take care, stay safe, and I'll see you in two Fridays time. Bye.